Before we discuss assigning R and S configuration, I wanted to just briefly discuss uh, the concept of chirality. And as we've read in the textbook, that is when a carbon has four different groups or things uh, attached to it. So for instance, this carbon has this two carbon chain, an ethyl, has this one carbon chain, a methyl, it's got an H, and it's got a chlorine. And we could also draw this same compound like this. And we cannot assign configuration here, but we can still observe that this carbon is attached to the same four groups. So you can see chirality carbons or chirality centers uh, in a couple of different ways. Sometimes we have the wedges and dashes here to, uh, to show three-dimensional um, arrangement. And it's a bit more obvious then that the uh, carbon has four different groups attached to it. But sometimes we don't care about the three-dimensional arrangement or we don't know about it. We don't know which uh, carbon or which hydrogen or which group should be pointed forwards. And so we might draw that chirality center this way. I could do the same thing down here and draw the chirality center like this. Again, we have no stereochemical information here, but we still know that this is a chirality center. It has four different groups attached to the carbon. We could also practice drawing the enantiomer of a chiral compound. So let's look at this top one here. If I want to draw the enantiomer, there are a couple ways I can do that. I can reverse the wedge and the dash. So the chlorine goes on the wedge, hydrogen on the dash, or I can draw the mirror image of the molecule. And let's just pretend there's a mirror right here. If I want to draw the mirror image, I would draw this. This is easy to do with small molecules. Uh, it's a bit more difficult to do. Uh, imagine if there were a couple of rings here or we had six of these chirality centers. Um, that's a bit of a challenge. It's probably easier just to invert each chirality center like I did here. Um, I also, so in this case, the mirror is a vertical mirror. But the first blue structure that I drew was also a mirror. And that was a mirror that was in the plane of the screen or of the page, right? So the chlorine is reflected in that mirror and it's now on top. The hydrogen is reflected in that mirror. It's now on the bottom. And you could put a mirror above the molecule if you wanted to. You could put a mirror below the molecule if you wanted to. And I'm not going to draw all of those right now, but you can put a mirror anywhere you want to draw the mirror image. Uh, but again, it's probably easiest just to go through to all the chirality centers and swap them. Uh, so let me, let's go on to assigning R and S now to these two chirality centers. So I'm going to use some different colors here to, to uh, to keep track of our numbers. So as you read in the Kahn Ingold Prelog rules description, we want to assign priority to each of the four groups. So this is a group here, and that's a group, and of course the hydrogen is a group, and the chlorine is a group. And priority goes with atomic number. So which of these has the largest atomic number? That's definitely going to be the chlorine. Um, and then I have a carbon attached right here, and I've got a carbon attached right there. So both of those have the same atomic number, so we don't know which one can be two or probably three, but of course the hydrogen has the lowest atomic number, so I can go straight off give that um, number four. So how do I figure out which of these carbons is the higher priority? Well, let's make a list of what's attached to each carbon beyond the chirality center. So I'll just put that in sort of a parentheses here, right? The carbon on the right side is attached to three hydrogens, right? It's a methyl group. The carbon on the left side, though, is slightly different. It's attached to another carbon and two hydrogens, right? So right here, we've got a CH2, so we've got two H's that are not drawn, and we've got the methyl group. And so the higher priority now becomes the first point of difference. And so we have CHH here, HHH on this side. So this C versus the H, that is the first point of difference. So I now have my priorities. Remember from the textbook that we count one, two, three with the fourth priority pointed away from us, and that gives us the absolute configuration. So I could do that here, and I'm going to get a left, uh, a left word rotation. But you may have noticed 
this hydrogen is not pointed away from us. It's, in fact, it's pointed directly towards us. So I could do a couple things. If I could redraw this molecule, um, or how we practiced uh, drawing enantiomers earlier, but if I could just flip it around a vertical line there, I'm not going to change the configuration. I'm just going to draw the molecule as I've flipped it around. Now, if you have a model kit and you can make a model of this molecule and then rotate it in space, that's what I'm doing here. Just like if you were standing up and you turned around uh, to face the opposite way you were originally facing. That's what I'm doing here. I'm not changing the configuration. I'm not changing the priorities. So I have those same numbers. Now, if I count one, two, three, I get a clockwise rotation. So this configuration is R. That's one way you could solve this. Another way to solve this is to recognize that the hydrogen is pointed towards you instead of away from you. So in order to fix it, we have to rotate 180 degrees. That means we could count one, two, three in the counterclockwise direction, observe the leftward rotation, and reverse that to get R as well. Right? We're reversing it because the hydrogen is pointed away from us instead of, I'm sorry, it's pointed towards us instead of away from us. So you could do that. Another way to solve this would be to swap uh, some groups. So let me redraw this molecule. I'm going to swap, uh, I'm going to draw it like this actually. I'm just going to use the priorities as my groups. It makes it a little quicker to draw this. Okay, so this molecule is the same as the original black molecule, except I'm using the priority numbers uh, to describe the location of the groups. If I swap two of those, say the one and the four, I've inverted this. This is the enantiomer. And I can prove this to you if I count one, two, three. That's the S configuration. We already know that our starting molecule was R. Uh, so that's one swap. We'll call it one swap. What if I swap again? Let's swap um, not the one and the four, because that would take us right back to the original, but what if I swap the one and the two? We'll call that the second swap. And some people will refer to this whole technique as a double swap. If I count one, two, three, the number four is pointed away from me, that gets me to the R. So one swap gets me to the enantiomer. A second swap gets me back to the original, right? So I'm not going to tell you that any one of these techniques is correct. You should use the one that uh, works best for you. A single swap makes the enantiomer. You could assign S, recognizing that that means that your original molecule was R. You could do a double swap, recognizing that you get back to the original molecule. Now you've put the four in the correct position. You can count one, two, three, and come up with the correct assignment. Uh, or you could just look at this and say the hydrogen is pointed towards me, so when I count one, two, three, I need to reverse that direction. Let's practice that with this other drawing. So I have an OH. The hydrogen is always number four. Uh, the O versus carbon versus carbon versus H, that's going to be number one. And then I'm, again, stuck with two carbon groups. The methyl, just like I had up here with priority three and the ethyl, just like I had up here with priority two. Those are gonna be the same priorities. You'll notice that a methyl will always be lower priority than any other carbon group. So now I can look at this and count one, two, three. Um, but I hope you've noticed that the four, it's actually in the plane of the screen. Uh, and so I, this counting won't work at all. Uh, what I need to do is rotate this molecule. I could rotate it around a vertical line. Basically, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so the hydrogen rotates away from me. And that would give me, let's see if I can draw that. Something that looks like that, more or less. Um, and I can assign the same priorities here. 
So we know that the H is number 4, the OH is number 1, the methyl is 3, and the ethyl is 2. Now the hydrogen's pointed away from me, and I can assign 1, 2, 3. And that would give me the S configuration. Another way to do it would be a double swap. Okay, so let's redraw this with one swap. I'm going to put the, I'm going to swap the H and the methyl. And again, I'm going to use just the numbers to denote the priorities uh, and the groups. So it saves me a little time. So you'll notice I swapped the three and the four groups. That puts the four where I want it. This is the enantiomer of my original compound. So let's just count that. One, two, three. That gets me to R, which makes sense if my original was S. Let's swap it again. And as long as I don't touch the four, uh, I can get back to my original compound. So let's swap the one and the three. And now I count one, two, three, I get to S. So my original compound, I think I've confirmed that it was S by two different techniques. Um, but you can see how we might have to uh, do a bit of, of manipulation. And I want to point out that this is probably the hardest way to solve or the hardest um, uh, question of R and S configuration to solve when the H, when the number four priority is in the plane of the screen. So just be aware of that when you're going through these problems.